A great portfolio used to be good enough to keep you booked for months, but times have changed. Now it takes so much more. And today I'm talking about the things that you have to have for your photography website and what mistakes you need to avoid. Hey, boudoir photographers. Are you ready to be totally booked out with high paying clients? I'm Tracy Lynn, and I went from side hustle photographer to running a million dollar boudoir photography business, working just 30 hours a month. That's right, just 30 hours a month. On this podcast, I tell you how I did it and how you can too. Hey there, and welcome back. This week, I want to focus on websites because they are so important. I really don't think that photographers realize how important they actually are. So many people I talk to in my DMs are focused on social media and making sure that they show up regularly instead of creating a website that honestly makes their marketing efforts so much easier. Over the years, I've looked at a lot of websites and a lot of photographers make the same mistakes. They build a website that feels more like an online business card rather than a website that gives leads everything they need to know to become a client. This business card website has a lot of beautiful photos, but not a lot of information about why you're the photographer for them. Basically, it tells you how much they should expect to pay and maybe has a contact form to fill out. All this is doing is scaring off potential clients, and I know this from experience. When I first started my business, my website was an online business card. In order to actually get a client to follow through and book, it took a lot of convincing and a lot of time spent on consults. My website led with pricing, and I always just hoped my work spoke for itself, which that time in 2016, thankfully it did. I was able to stay booked out back then pretty easily, but the boudoir genre was newer and there were fewer photographers specializing. So at that point, clients just wanted someone who was good and they would pay whatever that photographer charged. Things are different now. The market is different. And let's be honest, the economy is different. Now you have to convince your ideal clients why you're the photographer for them and that you're worth the prices that you're asking. And the best and easiest way to do that is by laying it out on your website in the right way. So let's talk about the website must haves for your photography business and what website mistakes that you need to avoid. Before we focus on the must haves, I want to talk about a few common mistakes I think it's important to avoid. My coaching program and Six Figure Simplified both include very intense website audits, and I see a lot of photographers making the same mistakes. Remember, you don't know what you don't know. It's okay if you're making these mistakes, but if you take anything from this episode, I want you to know exactly what you shouldn't be doing so that you won't continue to do the wrong things. The first mistake that you need to avoid is thinking that your clients are gonna book just based on your work. Unfortunately, it's not 2016. There are a lot of photographers out there, meaning that your work doesn't just speak for itself anymore. Now there's cheaper options and those are typically at the same level as you. That means that not only do you have to create a website that takes your clients on a journey, but you also need to make it obvious what sets you apart in your marketing efforts and especially on your website. Another thing that you need is to have information they don't actually know that they need. And I know that that sounds very confusing, but let me explain. What you want here is to give them information you want them to know that so that you can make the money that you need to make. So for example, as a boudoir photographer, I want to sell albums. I talk a lot about the importance of albums on my website. Let's say that you want to sell wall portraits, then you need to talk more about how important printing is and how confident it's going to make you when you look at that image every single day. But more importantly, you need to give them a reason to stay on your website. This helps with SEO or search engine optimization because it tells Google that your website has valuable content. The longer they stay, the better. And the easiest way to do that is to give them a reason to stay. The second mistake you need to avoid is leading with pricing. I see this so much, not just with websites either. I see it often in how photographers talk about their sessions. Instead of talking about pricing immediately, I want you to make a big mindset shift and start talking about how amazing sessions are with you. 
about how they're going to leave with such confidence before their wedding day, or they're going to have so much fun and possibly leave with a new best friend, you know, you. So it's important to shift the conversation to how they're going to get so much more than just pretty photos out of this entire experience. The third mistake I want you to avoid with your photography website is just not finishing it. Oh my gosh, I see this one so much. I know building your website is a big undertaking and something is better than nothing, but you really need to make sure that you at least finish your website. Remember, done is better than perfect. You can always fix things and update them, but if you just have a coming soon website for months to years, it's not gonna be effective, you know? Hey there, before I talk about website must-haves, I want to interrupt this episode really quickly to let you know that I write a newsletter every single week. I cover photography, business, marketing, strategy, industry happenings, client wins, celebrations, and so much more. It is just for you, and you can get on the list right now at rebrand.ly slash TLC newsletter, and I'll also link it in the show notes. Now, back to the show. Let's talk about the first thing that you need to have on your website, and that's a goal. Without a goal, it's really hard to create your website with strategy. As a boudoir photographer, you might have a goal of booking a consult knowing you can easily talk the client into booking that session. Or you might be more like me and have a goal of booking an actual session and avoiding the consults entirely. I absolutely hate consults. Each of these goals would have a totally different strategy. For example, let's say you want to book your sessions and avoid consults. That's my strategy. You're going to want to make sure that they're extremely informed and comfortable with you in order to make this happen. They need to know exactly how a session works, what happens at each phase, and exactly what they need to bring with them to the session. Instead of talking about chatting at a consult, place a book now button all over your website in the right places, of course. I like to have a book now button in the menu, the footer, and in specific places on the homepage, about page, and investment page. Can you see how having a goal gives you more direction? All right, now I'm gonna switch gears and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the actual pages you need on your website. The first page you need to have on your website is pretty obvious, it's the homepage. Every what? Every website needs a homepage. It's basically an overview of your website, what you stand for, who you are. Plus a quick overview of the booking process. My biggest recommendation and probably the thing that I see most photographers do wrong is putting the wrong photo on the homepage. They'll do a slideshow version or maybe multiple photos with a busier design. But the thing is, it needs to be horizontal or landscape photo that's going to be the only thing showing above their fold or what you see on the screen when they first land on the page. Put some text over it if your website template will allow. But the most important thing is that this is your very best horizontal or landscape photo and your ideal clients can visualize themselves in this photo. Remember, when a potential client lands on your website, you have less than seven seconds to catch her attention before she moves on. That means that the photo needs to be exactly how she wants to see herself. And that's honestly so important in all of your marketing. I talk about this with coaching clients all the time. Everything that you put out needs to be something that your ideal client sees themselves in. I recently had that conversation with one of my coaching clients for a bridal fair. And I was like, make sure that every bride that you come across really sees themselves in the photos that you have at the bridal fair. That's how you're going to get the bookings. The second page you need to have on your website is an about page. Your about page is not about you. (laughs) Contrary to what you've been told in the past, instead what this is is a page letting them know more about the actual session and what they can expect from the session. We're talking a little bit about you, about your business, but mostly about the client and what they want to feel and achieve by working with you. Are you all about giving them confidence? Are you all about providing the most amazing experience? Are you focused on a quick delivery time? Are you focused on making sure they leave with a beautiful album they can cherish forever? 
make sure that they understand that on your about page. Focus on your client experience and how you bring value to your clients beyond the finished product. Make sure they understand how a session with you is different than the cheaper photographer down the street. The third page you need to have on your website is an investment page and it's really not about the investment, it's more about the experience that you offer. Remember, I don't want you to lead with pricing. It's even more important on the investment page though. You want to start off with how important the session is, how great it's gonna make them feel, then, Focus on the actual process, how the session works, your approach to posing, focusing on albums, the ordering session process, how they're going to feel when they have this beautiful album in their hands. This is also where I like to add the frequently asked questions. Don't make the FAQ page a page by itself. Add it to your investment page instead. The fourth page you need to have on your website is your gallery page. Of course, you want to have a gallery page. You're a photographer, but you don't want it to be just a page with your favorite photos. There's a strategy to your gallery page. To me, I want to sell albums as a boudoir photographer, and I know most photographers listening to this podcast also want to sell albums. So if your goal is to sell albums, you need to show them. And that's what I want you to do on your gallery page. Have several albums so your audience starts thinking thinking about albums. The reason I want them thinking about albums is so that I don't have to work so hard when I sell. It's a little bit of sell psychology, but if you're constantly educating them and telling them, your clients, about how they need an album, then they're going to sell themselves on it. And the fifth page you need to have on your website is a contact page. And This feels obvious, right? You want to make it easy for them to contact you. But the way you set this up matters. To me, I want clients to book their session or consult directly from my website without needing me to actually book for them. But what makes more sense for you? Would you rather they contact you to start the conversation and schedule their session? Or do you want to make it easy for them to book a session or consult? All that matters here is what's best for you and your business. The sixth page you need to have on your website is a blog. This is quite possibly the most important thing that you could have on your website for a very important reason. Back when my website was basically an online business card, the reason that I was getting the bookings that I was was because my blog had so much information. On top of helping me rank with Google really high, it was also proving to my clients that I knew what I was doing, that I was an expert in my genre of photography. I wrote things like what to wear, how to prep, what to bring, and so much more. But most importantly, I was answering the questions that they had that maybe they didn't even know that they had. And I know for a fact that this is why I was able to stay so booked out early in my career. Now, if you only get one thing from this episode, I really think the most important thing that you can understand is that you want to build a website to bring in more potential clients and keep them interested in what you offer. And the best way to do that is with your blog and a great content plan. Instead of leading with pricing, what you want to do is make it easy to choose to hire you by showcasing how amazing your client experience is, how you're going to make them feel, how much you know, how you're the expert in your genre. And if you're ready to make this happen in your business to make blogging something that actually converts leads into amazing clients, I really want to encourage you to check out my new program, Fully Booked Without Burnout. While it's technically an SEO course, meaning I'm showing you how to rank on Google, it's also a blogging course to help your blogs not only rank on Google, but also convert website visitors into clients. Inside, I have over 18 trainings teaching you exactly and only what you need to know about SEO, blogging, and websites. And if you're ready to see results from your website, be sure to head over to tracylandcoaching.com slash fully dash book dash without dash burnout. And I will link that in the show notes as well. Thank you for listening to this episode of sustainable freedom with boudoir photography. Please be sure to rate and follow so that you never miss an episode. They drop every Thursday and they're always full of super actionable information for you to apply right now in your boudoir business. Until then, make your next shoot your best shoot.